Ladies and gentlemen, a very good day, an exciting day for me is that we're launching the Signature 12.4. Now, a lot of you have been following the development of the 12.4. We made quite a few uh, videos on that and uh, I'll put you a link to some of them uh, in the description. So if you've been following my progress over the last few weeks, you will know that all my live streams, uh, so certainly over the last couple of months, most of my live streams, apart from a couple, I think we used on um, on a fan dipole, have been using the prototype 12.4. But we've got all the production plates in now and I've built up one of the 12.4 production versions that's in the field right now, dinner plate size. Uh, nylon plates, dinner plate size, driven plates and everything. So what is this if you've just come along and you've gone, well, I don't know what you're on about. So originally we had a an all band antenna from 40 meters upwards and that's called the DX Commander Classic. And all that is, is six elements rising up a fiberglass tube and each of the elements tunes for a different frequency, 40, 30, 20 and so on and so forth. I wanted something a little bit bigger so we could get a full quarter wave, a loaded quarter, quarter wave on the 80 meter band. And that's what we've achieved with this. So what we're getting is an 80, 40, I'll cover 30 in a minute with you, 20. Well, all the, all the bands rather actually it tunes on six perfectly as well. Why the bigger plates? Because when you've got more separation between like a fan dipole, you'll get better bandwidth and sometimes better SWR. And that's, and I'll run through the plots in the detail in a minute. Right, so what we're gonna cover right now is what bands this is gonna do. What is the bandwidth, bandwidth per band? And I've got, and I've got some plots I can show you. What is the power handling? Can we use a tilt over base? Must it be, can it be self-supporting or have we got to guy it? Let's talk about radials briefly. We'll go about the future development that I've got over the next two or three weeks in my mind. What stay up kits we're using for it and how big is it really, okay? So this coming week, I'm building this production version and it, it will work because we've been using smaller plates on the prototype, not these larger plates. So, you know, only it can only go better, right? So it's in the field right now, and I've got it running from 80 up to six, as it so happens. Now I'm currently missing 30 meters, and that's really annoying me, but I've got two very specific tricks I can employ to add 30 meters on either doing 30 and 10 or doing 80 and 30. I'm not gonna run into the technology and the weird stuff that I've got in my head that will achieve that, but I have every confidence we will end up with 30 meters. Right now, if you buy this today, I'm not guaranteeing 30 and 10. You will have 30 or 10. What I can guarantee is I'll work my socks off. I've normally, I've got a great plan, right? To get 80 and 30 on the same element, that's it. There'll be no impact at all on 80, none at all. In fact, it could potentially make it slightly more efficient, but it could add 30 meters on a perfect tune because the idea is we don't have any ATU for this, all right? Sure, on the 80 meter, 75 meter band. So if you want to go from 3.5 up to four, there's no antenna that will do that for you unless you add a load of 50 ohm resistors. But you can get a fairly wide bandwidth there as best we can and use either the ATU button or an outboard switch if you want to go all the way from FT8 right up to 75 meters or whatever you want to do if you're in America. And I should have put my phone on shutty uppy, but I didn't. So I'll do that now. Right, what's next? Uh, bandwidth per band. I'll put, as I'm chatting, I'll put them on the screen here. But effectively what we've got is 100 kilohertz on 80 at 1.5 SWR, 100 kilohertz. That's pretty good. I'm really pleased with that. I think what we'll end up with is 150, 200 kilohertz, at two to one SWR. So don't be worried about 80 meters. 40 meters is gigantic to cover the whole band. In fact, all the bands cover more than the allocated bandwidth uh, we have for frequency allocated to us anyway, apart from 10 meters. 10 meters is enormous. It's from 28, well, nearly to 30, doesn't it? 
If you want CB instead of 12 meters, then we can just add a little bit. But again, you'll either have 12 and 10 or 11 and 10, if that's what you really wanted. Power, uh, there's absolutely no reason why this shouldn't do 1500 watts all mode. And I will show you a trick when I do the final build, not right now, if you want to increase that to 1500 watts continuous duty, and that's FT8 on 10 meters, 28 megahertz, because that's actually the point where most stuff starts to melt. We have discovered a way of not melting anything if you really wanted to go down the high power route. And indeed there's a coil on the 80 meter band and there's no reason that 80 meters why that won't oversaturate. We shouldn't get any melting there either. Certainly not on FTL, on SSB. Is it tilt over or not? Now Barenko, and I've got them on screen here. I bought this socket here from Barenko. It's the BE211 socket. I put that in the ground. I put a long aluminium tube and I self-supported the whole thing. It was up for a couple of three weeks. But what we noticed, the aluminium pole was actually taking a lot of the RF on 10 and 12 meters and sinking it into the ground like a big capacitor. So we can't use an aluminium pole if you wanted to self-support it. You could maybe use a fiberglass pole, but then we would crush the fiberglass as we started to tighten up. There's huge forces at the base here. Therefore, I am, I've made the decision not to recommend you self-support the 12.4 unless you're a clever engineer. Now, do you need a tilt over base? No, you don't. You can just push it up, guy it up, and the thing's done. So there will be guy, guy wire. You just need to supply your guy stakes. And I'm suggesting you go out about between 15 and 20 feet and you guy it at about six meters. It's about halfway up. I've had that up mm, since about January. And it was down for a couple of weeks, actually during some heavy storms. But I just think that's a sensible thing to do, uh, to be honest. So this is a guide system. It's not self-supporting. We do have a self-supporting option coming out, a slightly smaller version of this. It's called a Signature 9.5. It's a copy of the classic, a slightly tougher pole. And that's that's been on test since oh, last October. And I've got 500 of them turning up, or a thousand, I can't remember, May. May time, end of May. So we'll be launching it. If you're after a self-supporting no guy system, then that won't do 80, okay? It's a bit of a heavy ask. Let's put 80 on 9.5, 30 feet. So I think we've covered the tilt over and we've covered the self-supporting, we've covered the guys. We don't supply the guy stakes. Bit of angle iron, hammer into the ground, or let short scaffold pole and attach your guy to the top of that. A couple of feet off the ground, 60 centimeters, then you get your lawnmower around it, okay? Radials, while we're here, I put my radials down four months ago, in the winter, when there was absolutely no growth on the grass at all. Within a couple of weeks, they disappeared. I used my, I think I've got them here. These biodegradable radial pins, I used the two inches. I used about one a meter, okay? So if I'm putting, let's say, 300 meters or 1,000 feet of radial wire down, you'd need about 300 pins, okay? We sell these in uh, you, roughly 200. So I'd buy a couple of packs of these, to be honest. Or, oh, video's unavailable. <laughs> I'll fix that. Um, you can buy these from golf shops. I don't know if mine are a better price, I, I got no idea, but I know golf shots also do these because it's uh, for golfers. Future development. There's no reason why you couldn't run this because there's six six holes round the round the plate and a seventh in the middle, so it's a seven element system. There's no reason why you can't just use it as a six element system and have 80, 60, 40, 30, 20, and 17. You could have this kind of a low band, mid band special, or you could just have 80, 40 and 30, because you've got other options further up. That'd be good, that would be very good. Go for an 80, 60, 40, you know, whatever. There's all sorts of things you can do down the lower end. 160 meters, I am not developing. People are gonna ask me, oh, couldn't we have an inverted L for 160? Try it. 160 is a lot of wire, 
and even light wire will sag. Therefore, you need to put a lot of tension on it. That tension is becomes substantial and then we'll end up with all sorts of problems. This is not a 160 meter antenna. I could do, I could do it as a mono bander, or you could take the 18 meter nebula, the product up from this is about another 120, $130, 100 pounds ish that uh, you could mono band that as a 160. If you really wanted 160 meter vertical, you need a, a mono band. The trouble is you get all the harmonics of 160 would cock up everything. We've only just got this to work. Uh, how big is it? It's uh, Lockie and I have measured it. It's anywhere between 12.3 and 12.7, depending on how hard you pull these out or each section. Also, there is tolerance at the factory. So sometimes you can get almost an overshoot. You can actually see where the paint, you know, they've stopped painting there, which is one of the reasons Lockie and I are going to manually test every single one. So they all end up at about 12.4, 12.5 meters. But the length doesn't matter because we'll tune this with a coil, which is just over halfway up. In fact, the plan is to put the point coil a little bit higher to bring the next harmonic down a whisker. And that's what's going to hit us on 30 meters. That's the trick I've got effectively. You'll just wind a wire around, bit of tape. I'll supply all the cable ties. It'll be a complete destruction video or <laughs> instruction video for you to be able to do that. On average, I think that's about it. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments. Try not to email me. Comments are good because people can go through the comments and then see my answer because I've probably missed something out here. I'm only uh, releasing 50 right now because a lot of people know my product, understand the quality and my, um, my ability to resolve problems and all that sort of stuff. They've seen enough of it to say, I'll just buy it. So I thought we'd do 50 at an introductory price of 359 pounds, which is 400 and something dollars plus shipping. It's going to be about a $500 investment. But by the time you get it, which will be the end of this month, the end of April 22, we'll have the manual. We'll have the, we'll have everything. Or you'll have my apologies or your money back because I haven't got it to work. Right. But be assured, I'll be absolutely straight with you and uh, tell you, how it works, where the nuances are, if there are any, okay? But it's gonna be fantastic. And uh, I've been using it since January, love it. I can't wait to build my production version, get that up. Now, the old prototype will come down and sit in the field and rot away. So someone in the Midlands must want this, okay? The prototype, the original prototype, take it as it is. You just need to collapse it, stick it in the car and have a laugh with it. I'm thinking I'll give you a, another 50 pounds worth of DX10 wire just to, you know, whatever. Give you some maybe radial pins or a stay up kit or something. I'm thinking about a hundred pounds. Basically, I'll give you a hundred pounds worth of gear if you'll take the old one away. There we are. So if you're in the Midlands and you fancy that, you let me know. In the meantime, head over to here, or I'm sure by the time you watch this, if you do a search for a signature 12.4 DX commander, Google will probably have found it, but if not, that is the link there. And I'll put that in the description. If you're on a PC, that's easier to find than on your phone. And, uh, and you can pre-order that now at the, uh, at the pre-order price. Okay. So that's about it. Good luck. Good DX. Enjoy your radio. Have more fun with antennas than, than your neighbor and everything will be fine. Okay. So from me here, Callum in the bunker on a Friday afternoon, rushing to get this done thing done for you. All the best, and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.